Well, I'll get started again. So today we're talking about uh, adders, how we implement adders and subtractors, and talk briefly about arithmetic logic units. So we'll kind of experiment with these a bit in the lab on Thursday, um, and hopefully see how they work with real circuits. So when we talk about adders, the most basic form of the adder is what we'll call a half adder. And what a half adder does is when we consider adding, um, we have, for example, two numbers to add. So the most basic addition we can do just uses these two inputs um, here, just 0 and 1, so for the first, the first line here. And there's two possible outputs. We have the sum output and the carry output that goes to the next term. So for here example, we have a sum of 1, um, and the carry that will go up here is 0. Um, obviously, if you go through the options, what we talked about before is that there's four possibilities here. Um, 0, 0, sum of 0, carry of 0. If one of the inputs is 1, the sum is 1, and the carry is 0. Uh, if both inputs are 1, the sum is 0, and the carry is 1. Um, so I'll go through a design example using what we talked about before. So Breaking it out, again, we have two outputs here, so we just look at one at a time. Um, first, for the sum input, uh, the sum output, we can write down the min terms um, here. So we have, for example, this one is A complement um, anded with B gives us the sum of 1, and this one, A anded with B complement. Um, and if we add, or, or the two together, we get the sum of products form, which gives us this. The carry is actually even easier. And um, again, we can use the same sort of idea in that we add up all the min terms. Here, there's a single one, which is min term 3, which is A and B. So the carry output is simply A and B. So it's simply an AND gate. If we draw that um, directly as written, this is the implementation we get. So this is a three, you can see, um, because we're assuming there's no complements available, we just have A and B, we don't have A complement and B complement. Uh, what we're showing is basically three levels of logic, which is what I talked about before. So if we always assume we have complements, that's when it's two levels. Um, here I'm explicitly saying all we have as an input is A and B. Um, and this gives us this three level. So we want to simplify that down a little bit. And if we go through it, we start with the original equation as written. Um, oops. So what we'll use first is we'll use uh, 19, De Morgan's theorem. So here we'll convert each of those halves at once. So the we'll use it on both, on this and on this separately. Um, so we're going to go from this form to or form. So again, because the basic form of De Morgan's, each variable is complemented, we write that as if each variable is complemented, and we do that by double complementing B and double complementing A. Um, of course, these double complements cancel, giving us effectively the original. We then apply De Morgan's, um, so we you can look at it like those two get converted to the um, complement over the whole thing, leaving us with A or with complement B and complement A or with B. So because you'll use De Morgan's a fair amount, it's worth getting fairly comfortable um, with the idea of the application of it, especially when only one variable has the complement and not. Um, so we now have this form. So Again, we'll once more apply De Morgan's theorem. Um, this time, we're going to go use it on basically the entire um, two halves here. So we'll consider each of these together. So you can look at it as if each of these is one variable, and each of these is one variable. Oops, sorry. Um, so when you get that, we're then left with uh, this version here. 
just copy up there. So the next step in it is we'll actually um, apply the distributive principle. So when we have this, um, there should have been brackets around this, sorry. We have this, and we'll simply have A anded with A complement um, here, A anded with B, B and B complement ended with A complement and B complement ended with B. From there, um, we can go through and say, well, A and A complement is zero, um, B and B complement is zero. So we can simplify that again, um, leaving us with this, which may at first glance not look a whole lot simpler than sort of what we started with. But if we keep going through it, we'll see if this will reduce it um, to a two-level form. So here we're against, we once more applied De Morgan's. You'll notice the trend of lots of application of it. Um, and we get this form here. So when we apply it within each individual um, literal here, you can see we get this, so we've converted the two under there, um, rewrite it, and once more, we'll apply De Morgan's, this time to the entire thing. So we'll consider this as one literal C, and this as one literal D. Um, so when we rewrite that out, what you'll see is that basically we get um, this form here where, again, because we already had the inversion over the whole thing, we end up with a double inversion because when we apply D Morgan's, um, we get this inversion over both sides. So we draw that line underneath of the original. Um, that cancels and we're left with this form. The final step here is to notice that um, this form, which has two inversions on each of the input variables, is just a very direct application of De Morgan's theorem. Um, so we apply that to end up with a NAND gate here, um, an OR gate here, and then the whole thing ANDed. So when we draw this out in circuit format, um, this is basically the simplest representation. So we have um, here, these three gates are what we just derived, and to get the carry output, we just use a knot on the NAND gate. Um, so this gives us the carry output for the half adder. When you consider this form, you might say, well, that doesn't seem that much more simple, because, for example, when we go back to the original um, schematic we had, we have just what you might call basic gates. So these are just three AND gates, one OR gates, and we have two inverters on the input. When we go to the simplified form, um, you'll notice you have again an OR gate, an AND gate, but here we have a NAND gate, which uh, you could call it equivalent to an AND gate with a NOT gate on the output. And why this form is actually more desirable is that Back when we talked about how gates are built in hardware, um, I showed this example of a NAND gate implementation. And a NAND gate implementation is just using four transistors here. Um, to build an AND gate in real devices, we actually build a NAND gate and then invert the output with another two gates forming the inverter. Um, So you have something like that. So when we look at our simplified implementation, it actually is better because um, this NAND gate will be faster than the previous example where we had an AND gate, which is physically built with a NAND gate plus an inverter, um, and then two more inverters on the input. So we have a lot more logic to go through and in real life, you'll have a lot more transistors to go through. So in this example, for this would be probably be faster if you were building this with real chips. But what you might have noticed, looking through the truth table of the sum output, 
is that it's also the same thing as an XOR gate. Um, so the sum output can also be built if you're using uh, complex gates, we call it, so including exclusive OR, with just a single gate, a single XOR gate. In that case, we can call the half adder um, something like this. So here we have a half adder that takes the inputs A, B, and has the sum output and the carry output. Um, and again, the total truth table is what I showed back here of this. So this is taking just the two single bit inputs and creating the sum output and the carry output. Now the half adder itself has a problem because when we're doing the um, when we're doing this math, what you know is that for the first column, this will work because we have A, B, and we have a sum. So here the sum is 1, the carry is 0. But then the carry is moved up, and so we have a carry input. Um, and then we use three inputs, carry input, A, and B, in. And again, we still create sum, output, carry out. And again, this moves up to carry in. Um, and this just keeps going. So it should be obvious that if we want to add binary numbers, it's insufficient to just have a half adder. We need more. So we use what's called a full adder. And full adder has three inputs and two outputs. So the three inputs um, carry in A and B, and the two outputs sum out and carry out. Um, so this is the truth table for the full adder. So if we have A, for example, A and B in, carry in, um, it's basically what we had showed when we were doing binary addition and subtraction. That is, for example, basically, if only one of these inputs is 1, so for example, just B or just carry, you get a single sum and no carry. Um, if there's two ones you get a single carry. Like three bits? Yeah. yeah, we'll go through that after. So. The very exciting conclusion has that part in it. Um, so for the full adder, um, you know, we're given this truth table. So again, we can go through the whole design process. And for the full adder, uh, we see, see, for example, that we have a sum um, corresponding to min terms M1. So this would be equivalent to writing A complement, B complement, CN. Um, M2, which would be equivalent to A complement, B, CN complement. Um, M4, so again, A, B complement, carry in complement. And uh, the final one, where they're all ones. Um, so again, we can go through the process to create the whole design for this. I won't actually go through that whole example, because it's fairly long. Um, and we'll kind of show a shortcut version of it. In the exact same way, you can look at the carry output um, and see what min terms correspond to it. So we have A complement, because A is 0 anded with B, anded with carry in. Um, here we have A, anded with B complement, anded with carry in. Here, A and B are 1, so it becomes A and B, and carry input is 0, so you complement it. And finally, it's 1 for all inputs being 1, so A and B, and carry in. So those are each of the min terms corresponding to the element on the truth table. But what's even easier than going through that whole thing, finding the result, is to just look at it um, sort of schematically. So if we call a half adder this block here, where we have the A in, B in, sum out, carry out, um, we can write a full adder as two half adders connected together like this. So, for example, we have the A input, the B input, um, and the sum output 
of the first half adder becomes the A input to this half adder, um, and the carry in becomes the other B input. So what you can see this is doing is basically just adding the first two bits here, um, A and B, and then it creates an intermediate carry out here. So carry in, say, um, or summons, I guess. Um, and then it adds that intermediate sum to the input carry to give you the final sum here. Then the two carries from both half adder, if either of the carries is high, the final carry is high. So it's very, very straightforward implementation of a full adder. And with this, we can actually add as many bits as you want, uh, or n bits, say. So here, for example, I have a four bit full adder. So the full adder, um, and this should be tied to zero. Um, the full adder just adds a combination, each, or each full adder adds one bit of the number together. Um, so you can see you chain the carryouts between the full adders. So the carry of the first two bits gets added, A0 and B0, um, and the carry goes onward to the next full adder. So when you look at this representation, you can see it's very much exactly like what we're doing here. We add A plus B, we generate that digit sum. Um, the carry gets driven up to the next column. You add that column with the carry, drive up the carry to the next column. Um, so when we generate the half adder, or the, the full adder, sorry, and chain them together like this, we can just add as many bits as we want. Um, so that's basically half the story. That's how we do addition. So then the question is how we do subtraction with this system. And to do subtraction, what we'll actually do is use this same um, adder and this same full adder architecture. Except what we'll do here is we'll, at the input, put a two's complement number. So before I said when we subtract, what we'll often do is take the complement of that negative number um, and add it in. So if you want, you know, 2 minus 5, what we're doing is 2 plus negative 5. Um, and how we generate this negative number, or how we generate this 2's complement, and again, this goes back to saying that it's easier to make a complement of a number than it is to make a whole separate subtractor circuit, is that we know, for example, that we can take um, the two's complement by just inverting a number and adding one. So, and then add one. So this is actually really easy in our realization because what we can do is if we invert all the inputs here, um, say you just put inverter gates on all the inputs, um, you can then add one by simply putting the carry in here to one. Um, so if that's logic high, this actually adds an extra one into your whole chain. So then this becomes an n-bit subtractor. So that's the easiest and most straightforward way of generating the subtractor. You can, if you really want, go through the same sort of exercise where um, we design it to use boros and half, so you start with a half subtractor that can generate a boro and then chain them together. But um, this is basically all we'll be doing in the lab and in class and in real life. This is how most uh, subtractors are generated. And we can even make it selectable. Um, and again, this is something you'll be experimenting with in the lab. And this is that if we use an XOR gate here, um, if you remember the truth table for an XOR gate, it looks like this. Um, so if you consider one input as a select or not, say if A, so if A is zero, we notice that the output Y is the same as B. If A is one, the output is, um, the complement of B, so it inverts it. So this mode pin, um, 
selects if we're in addition mode or subtraction mode. So if mode is equal to zero, um, it works as an adder because when mode is zero, we have carry in um, goes to zero, so there's nothing else added to it, and all of the B inputs are just passed straight through. When mode is one, carry in is one, so one extra gets added to it, and all of the B inputs uh, get inverted. So that's how we generate subtractors, and you can chain a lot of them together um, to generate, you know, large bit subtractors. Um, so I'll just go over a quick review of this again before starting the arithmetic logic units because they're a bit separate. Um, so again, when we're building up the adder, we start with the half adder. And this is just capable of only two inputs. And B generates the sum and carry. Um, there is an example of a design procedure from what we learned about the sum of products form. Um, it's gone through here, and again, all of these are in the slides online too. So when we directly write it, so this you could call the canonical form, as we originally synthesized it, this is how we would design a half adder. If you go through and simplify it, um, what you'll find is that you can have a slightly uh, better, as in uses less gates and less levels of logic design, which is shown here. And this design is better in real life because we're using um, a NAND gate here instead of an AND gate plus two inverters on the input, uh, which will be faster because there's less levels of transistors to be going through. In reality, though, we can also just build it with an XOR gate, which is frequently what we'll be using. So um, these are often what we'll call complex gates, an XOR. Um, compared to the simple gates being just and, or, nan, nor, not. The full adder um, is capable of taking carries from additional columns. So the full adder is basically just what we do to add two single bits, but we also add in the extra carry from the previous column. So the full adder does one single column in this addition, you can consider it. Um, and we can chain these together, the full adders together, to add arbitrary numbers of bits. So the full adder itself, we just build from two half adders. Um, the half adders, one half adder adding the A and B, and the other half adder effectively adding carry in. Um, and again, this generates a sum out, and the carry out, the carry out is what gets fed into um, the next chain. So in this example here, we have a four-bit full adders, or four-bit adder generated from four full adders chained together. Um, to generate a subtractor, we invert all of the inputs and then add an extra one through the carry. So to do that, we can simply use XOR gates to selectively invert them. So this idea of um, selective inversion then leads to the next thing I'll talk about, which is the arithmetic logic unit. Um, so the ar arithmetic logic unit is sort of how we consider a generic thing. So this is what's really used in computers and whatnot, where we want to where we want to have instructions telling it what to do. So we don't want it hard-coded only to be an adder, only to be a subtractor. Um, instead, to specifically tell it, do this, do that, do an addition, subtraction, do other stuff. Um, 